Welcome. Thank you, Medic. Welcome to the EULCS post-game lobby. I'm joined by Martin DeFisho, Lunga, Maurice Amazing, Stukun Schneider, and Fanatics mid laner, Caps. We already heard from Soaz, we already heard from Broxa, but Caps, geez Louise, what an <laughs> impressive win that was. Uh, and we talked a lot about the Nuke.Caps matchup before the game, but why do you think it was such a crushing win for you? Um, so we saw that last week uh, they really prioritized the Galio pick. So we had the Kogi counter. Uh, ready and we have practiced it a lot, so I felt really confident in the matchup. And so it's just a plan that worked out. It wasn't. Oh, wait, wait, wait! <laughs> I, I have to ask. Let's talk about it. So <laughs> you got two early kills in that matchup. The first one, if you remember, what? can you maybe explain what you think Nuketok was trying to do? Uh, I mean, I don't remember exactly. I remember the GP ult. I don't remember what happened before, though. All right. So before he took a lot of damage from you, he then walked in towards you, took a bit more damage, and then he actually dashed the wrong way. So he dashed back into you when he was already low, and you just hit him a few more times. And then he walked, they flashed away, and he died. So maybe, that was weird. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe it was because I W'd his E, else, it, else he tried to E backward, like be, be E out. That was the second time he tried that. Uh, and then he hit you because you were standing right on top of him. And he was already low when he, he walked He may have minions. entered, you know, like I think I can <laughs> that say that. That was really strange. <laughs> this he happens. He probably just didn't want wanted the wave, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, so, uh, but congratulations, fantastic game, fantastic win for you guys. Let's take thank a look. Uh, who is? Oh, oh, you're saying thank you. I thought the fish was jumping in for some reason. I don't know thank why. You, thank you. Because that usually <laughs> happens, I guess. Anyway, this is uh, the standings after today. Obviously, we are now exactly at the halfway point in the split. Team Vitality, Ooh. they're still on top. But they've been dealt a blow by G2 Esports, I gotta say. Obviously had a very convincing win over Team Vitality uh, Fnatic. Four games in a row win. G2, five games in a row win. It seems like those teams are really coming into their own. So uh, I think Maurice was saying it looks more like what you expected the standings to look like before the split, maybe outside of Vitality being at number one. I said that to you yeah, before you know, like, started. Okay, so, so the games today changed a bit. You know, like there was a huge distance between Vitality and the other teams. I think them nearing it and Giants dropping another game and Misfits actually taking another game, you know, like makes the standings a little more That's appeasing fair. to the eye. But the things you pointed out when I said that was like, mm, no, <laughs> Giants are still sitting, you know, fourth place. They're still fourth place in the standings. But now they're tied. <laughs> That's true. They're tied now. I agree. Don't call me out like that. It does look more like, you know, you could have predicted. I think maybe, uh, I mean, still surprised obviously the Giants are that high. We had predicted them as one of the bottom teams coming in. But uh, the fact that Fnatic and G2 are picking up steam, of course, yep. is what I, th I thought Fnatic would be the Vitality right now and be the one sitting at number one, but I guess number two so is fine. Let's ask Caps. Is number two fine for now? Are you happy with your progression so far as a team? Uh, I mean, so I think we've said it a lot of times in a lot of interviews that uh, Joey introduced a lot of things from G2, mm -hmm. and it's definitely took some time for us to implement it, and we're still working on it, uh, and we're playing a completely different game. So it will take time for us to be, to be as good as we were last split, but I think we will make it, and I think once playoffs comes around, I think we will probably be unstoppable. Well, um, if you keep crushing it in lane like that, I think the wins might come easier as expected. Nuketok walked in and died. <laughs> you know, he still killed him. <laughs> he, he did, and that's true. It's, it's one of the joy, joy things that he says when he drafts. Sometimes he is that good at drafting uh, that he forced the enemy to pick some a specific thing. Mm. And it's the same in mid lane. Sometimes a mid lane is that good that he forces the enemy ah. to, to walk in and just die. Man, yeah. you're really good. Yeah. Dude. That's why you're on my MVP list. Spoiler for later. Ah, strong. All right. Uh, bottom of the table, <laughs> H2K picked up another win. They're two and seven now. Um, nice game, actually. Today with their new duo, which is a monster. And with Selfie, man. he was a monster. <laughs> Unicorns of Love, sadly, at the bottom still. So they're still together. But H2K is picking up a bit of momentum. I, I mean, just first of all, you got a jungler now. Yeah. That. It also, doubled the wins. You also have a jungler who ganks. <laughs> like, Shook was really active. Him and Selfie together worked really well, the two new members on the team. So clearly a giant upgrade for H2K, and mm -hmm. it paid off already. Yeah, it did well. This is the first half of the split. And as we close out the first half of the split, I have come up with three statements based on what we've seen so far. Now, they may be a little bit out there. They may be a little controversial. They may be right. It's all your call. You can agree or disagree. You can discuss. I'm just going to throw them at you, and whoever wants to can jump in first, all right? This is the first one. Fnatic and G2 will be miles ahead of Vitality by the end of the regular season. Go ahead, Caps. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. I think miles ahead. I mean, depends I, th what miles ahead means exactly. Okay. But uh, I think once playoffs comes around, I wouldn't be surprised if either of us would free uh, Vitality in a best of five. 
So mm. do we do all of the analysts agree that at least G2 and Fnatic will be ahead of Vitality come playoffs? Uh, I think that's the safest prediction mm -hmm. yes. uh, to make. Uh, I still think like Vitality do play a lot of different champions and are trying like kind of different styles. So that's at least really good for them and could prepare them a little bit for best of five. But I can definitely see when Fnatic and G2 fully understand what to do early to mid game, that they won't really struggle against some of their a little bit more aggressive plays from Vitality. So can we then discuss the miles ahead or a lot ahead of Vitality? Because going off of the game that was played today, G2 was already on another level. Yeah, but we cannot take one game and just like put it I'm being devil's put it out there. <laughs> but I do think that in terms of matching Vitality's early game macro, because I think we, we criticize like Vitality for sometimes like not, not being 100% clean in the macro, but I do think that the early to mid game is 100% clean, actually. They have it all prepared. They know what they have to do. But when people actually figure out what Vitality wants to do and they match it properly, that's when Vitality struggles. And I think G2 and Fnatic have team members and have the coaching staff behind them for them to actually understand every single scenario that they're going to come up against. And I think this advantage was something that Vitality had beforehand mm -hmm. and it's going to drop now. It's going to drop now. So we talked when they lost to Misfits Vitality. We talked about the possible change in momentum, the possible change in atmosphere and that team. Could they handle it? Could they bounce back? They did so mm -hmm. swimmingly. Do you think this is a different kind of loss for them? Is this a more difficult loss for them to bounce back from because it was so hard and because it was against the reigning champions? I mean... <laughs> Getting uh, destroyed like that always sucks, but I, I looked at him doing the pause we had, which was just towards the end when we did yep. the chrono break, uh -huh. and they were all just kind of laughing, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and still seem to be in good spirit. So I think they're going to learn from it. I don't think it's going to break them. I think they're already looking towards playoffs after picking up so many wins uh, at the start of the split. So I think they're they're okay with it, and a lot of it's going to be based on tomorrow's game. You know, if they just win there, mm -hmm. it's back. Good scrims or something, and they're back as well. So. I, I don't want to say Fnatic and G2 will be miles ahead of Vitality uh -huh. towards the end of regular season, but I think they will be better. Will all three of them be in playoffs no matter what? I'm going to say yes. Yes? Yeah. I yeah. disagree? All right, so Vitality, G2, and Fnatic for sure in playoffs. We'll hold you guys to that. I am going to move on to uh, my next statement, uh, and that is Misfits, they don't have the individual talent to do better than last year. Hmm. I agree. And why do you agree? Because I said so earlier, uh, but <laughs> for people that haven't been watching all day. <laughs> no, <laughs> on a more serious note, um, the thing is that like what, what uh, people are like basically like the casual viewer may sometimes not understand like or like that is sometimes also controversial is that some players, even though they're really weird in their playstyle, they have this um, specific thing that they have going for them. I think Senkox, while he's overall a good player. And I don't think anyone disagrees with that. I don't think he has anything that makes him like special, Stand outstanding in, in some kind of way. Whereas Power of Evil, even though he had the weirdest champion pool ever, and he had a really weird play style where sometimes he gave up lanes that he shouldn't have, and then sometimes plays too aggressive, like these kind of wing things, that he had this X Factor going for him, and he knew how to win. I think this is something that Senkrux doesn't have. And I honestly question if Mickey X has it compared to Ignar, because obviously they're kind of equal in terms of like play, whatever it is. But I still think that Ignar, he, he can still step up to that occasion and make that extra play happen. And I think that's a huge difference between Misfits this year and last year. All right. What I mean, do you think? I think uh, Misfits did really well last year. Uh, they, what well, they got second place and they made it really far worlds. Mm -hmm. And since we'll probably be first, then I don't see them ever getting first. And making it like they already made it out of groups last year, so yeah. I don't see them making it. Did they overperform last year? Um, I mean, I don't know if they overperformed. I think we were just worse than we will be this year, uh, and there were no other good teams to challenge. Uh, I think this year we will be better, mm -hmm. so we will have the first spot, and maybe they can make it se second again. But yeah, oh, we'll but I love mm. that you're very confident about the fact that you guys are going to be first. Like who, G2, who? <laughs> I mean, he has to go for yeah, Fnatic here, of course. Yeah. We, we, have, we have Joey, right? So we have half of G2. <laughs> sure, have sure. We have Joey. Perks and the other one. Final note about this one? Um, quick note on the Misfits of Worlds. I don't think they overperformed. I think the meta just ended up really fitting what especially Ignal wanted to do, where yeah. everyone was stuck in Art and Sensor meta, and he was like, I got some counters to it. Yeah. And Ignal on stage, giant playmaker, never afraid of going aggressive. I think Mickey, there's a difference. Mickey is definitely more laid back and not as all in. Because mm -hmm. Ignat did gamble a lot yeah. in game, uh, which obviously worked during Worlds because of how he could counter the meta, which was huge for them. But uh, with Mickey, 
I agree we won't get the same kind of crazy all-in aggression that could benefit Misfits. I do think, though, in terms of individual talent, I think they will be fine. Mm -hmm. um, I think the main thing that's going to be better for them is they can play m different metas. So if it is a more uh, fo meta focused on roaming mid laners, let's just say Talia, Aurelian, yep. Soul, Galio are the three main picks. Everyone loves to play them. Senkux is going to be way better than Power of Evil at playing that style. Right. Oh, you mean like Wills? Sure. I mean, <laughs> but he didn't play those at Worlds. No, he but, but that was own. the meta. It was, it was, uh, we had a lot of different picks at Worlds, though. Like, you could play LeBlanc in there. There was Oriana being played a lot. I, mean, I think well. Galitel ended up being the most consistent. Anyway, I do no? agree with those two picks, but then people could ban them away like Misfits could do. Yeah. And then there were still plenty of picks for Power Evil to play. I just think that style will fit better for them. And if it's more defensive supports, I think that's better with Mickey. Yeah, I'm loving the discussion this is generating. Caps jumping in there, not agreeing with the official I'm just saying se. there were definitely more mid laners at, at Worlds than just Galio and Talia. Yeah, that, I think that's clear. But uh, the last statement we're going to go to is Shook and Selfie will carry H2K to playoffs. First win on the board, we no. said it. No? Okay. No party then. Why not? <laughs> what? Just say no and uh, just, just give over? I, I, I mean, they did win now, which was good. But I think this HK lineup still have a long way to go if they want to pick up a ton of wins in a row. Because when you're down two and seven already, like there are eight teams above you who are currently fighting for the playoff spots, mm -hmm. where multiple of them have now double your wins already. They just already. have to win every single game. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they kind of have to. But I think when they face like Vitality, G2, Fnatic, these guys, they're going to lose. Yeah. So they're not going to be able to win every single game. And I think they've dug themselves in too deep of a hole. Yeah. to make playoffs. I think that's fair. Do you think that they can be competitive to fight for a playoff spot, that they can keep this going with Shook and Selfie? It okay. really depends, like, because the thing is that, like, obviously they have shown a lot of aggression now, but they're going to be patch changes. They're going to be, like, things that they may not account for. So maybe Shook, because he came straight off solo queue, Selfie came straight off solo queue, so the picks they had going for them now, and they have going for them now, may not be applicable soon, uh, like, in um, in the next couple of patches, so it may actually swift the moment, change the momentum again, and maybe they have to play a more late game style or uh, a more aggressive style, whatever it is, and have to think more about the game. That's when solo queue players usually fall flat. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see how that all evolves. That's the uh, end of that. I think we had some healthy discussion about these topics, and we're going to have some more healthy discussion as we will talk about possible MVPs on LOL Esports. Yeah, LOL Esports right now. You can find the Fischio's top five picks for MVP halfway through the split. Let's take a closer look at the guys you selected, starting with Caps in fifth place. He's on the list. Number five. He's not number one on my list just yet. Uh, I have him on. I think uh, Caps has become the main carry on Fnatic, which is really big. Uh, we do see a big shift around how they play. Like, it's no longer Reckless just sitting in the side lane. He's actually holding mid uh, fairly often. You and can ask him. <laughs> I mean, but we see that in game. Because <laughs> okay. uh, last week, I remember being like, okay, typically now, Reckless will go side lane and Caps will have to hold mid. But that didn't happen. Caps was Oof. going side lane. It was Reckless holding mid. Same or thing happened lane. today. Main damage dealer on Fnatic. Highest damage dealer in the entire league in multiple of the games crazy sometimes in what he's doing <laughs> but i think he's one of the absolute most important players on any team and that's why he's on my list caps do you think you should be higher than fifth place on the list of these players they'll come back up in a second i mean so mvp is usually the regular season i guess yeah yes. and since we're mainly focusing on playoffs i think any like i mean of course i want to perform as, as good as possible and during the regular season but the main goal is getting to that playoffs level and performing as well as possible there so uh, MVP is not really on the, the focus list, I guess. I see. Uh, yeah, but it would be nice, you know, to pick it up. I wouldn't mind. Why, why not? Why not? Uh, you said in the video we saw at the top of the day that it's always fun to play versus perks. It's always exciting uh, matchup. And do you think he is rightfully in the number one spot as right now the best player in the league? Whoa, according to the Fischio? Most valuable player. Most valuable. Not Sorry. necessarily the absolute exactly. best. Exactly. But pretty good. Uh, I mean, uh, um, yeah. I mean, I guess you can make a case for for a lot of players. And mm -hmm. yeah, he's... Probably, uh, he's definitely one of them. Yeah, I think it's an uh, important note that you gave there. It is the most valuable player. Definitely. Which, yeah, exactly. So any others on this list that you want to give some, you, they can read the article, but that you want to give some special shout out or some special I mean, I got to? the double A to carry duo, Hansama and Kobe. Mm -hmm. Fun enough, I wrote almost the same thing for both of them. Yeah. Being like, hey, this team, Getting most of the wins through the late game. These are the two AD carries who perform really well in late game team fights and they kind of play around. I think Kobe is the one that stands out the most as yeah. definitely the single main carry on a team because every win Splice picked up in the start, the first four wins they got was late game, protect Kobe, let Kobe carry fights, and then win. Mm -hmm. And I think 
he became such a valuable member of that team as the only re remaining one as well. And I'm actually really glad to see him show up big time, especially in the late game fights. But, well, but you don't think, uh, I mean, like uh, you said before that Regulus wasn't really the main carry anymore of Fnatic, but I don't know if it's necessarily him not being the main carry for us, just changing the style. Because even this game we saw, and we had to ban two 80 carries and first pick sure, a third yeah. 80 carry. Just to... Do you think Reckless should be on the list if we're based on the week one to week four? Um, I mean, again, it's uh, it's hard to judge from because it's it's best of ones in like what eight games or something like this, uh, and it's the start of the season. So I don't necessarily think he he, he like. I mean, you can make a case for him. You can make sure. a case for a lot of other people, um, but I just uh, yeah. I mean, I just think when when uh, when he gets enough respect that. He gets two bands and gets yeah, for sure. first pick and a carry. Then I am by no means saying that Reckless is not even close to this list, but when it comes to the most valuable players, uh, I gotta I mean, look at some of the main big carries who really stands out for their individual teams, and these guys all do that. And are, as you say, valuable to bringing their team to wins. And someone who's absent here, who was very high on Amazing's list, was yeah, Gilius, but, we, we, but <laughs> they were not. <laughs> so uh, is it really enough for you to have one game that happens like this to throw him off there? Because no. you can't negate the influence he's had so far. No, I, I don't think it's... it's uh, we can just throw him off, and I don't think I would do that because I would disrespect him in that kind of manner because he has kind of like been a really great influence for Valatility in seven wins now. So um, for him, the issue is just... If enemy junglers and enemy teams get smarter, how is he going to respond? Because so far they have played with an experience advantage, in my opinion, where they have approached the meta in a faster and more aggressive way, and they've come away with wins that maybe they shouldn't have um, if we're just basing that on the drafts and like instead of like the individual play in that very moment. So um, I think if enemy teams get smarter and they actually figure out what Gillis is going to do, he's going to drop way low on the MVP standings, at, le in, at least for my MVP standings, because he seems to be low on yours already. Well, where Which was he? Where was he? See? Well, New Tuck was six, so uh, maybe yeah, seven? Uh, like, he doesn't, yeah, he won't have the influence necessary anymore. He was in my top 10. He was in your top 10. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that is the opinion-based MVP discussion for a statistical approach to the MVP discussion. We are joined by Aaron Medic Chamberlain. Thank you very much, Shox. As you say, Deficio can go away with his namby-pamby, you know, subjectic MVP rankings, picking the players that he likes the most or he thinks the hair looks the best. I want stats, I want numbers, and that's exactly what dissecting the numbers is all about. We're going to look at the statistically most valuable players across the entirety of the EU LCS. Now, to do this, we grouped all of the players into one big pool. And although this method isn't totally infallible, I'm pretty darn good at it, so let's have a look at exactly what we were doing. Every player was ranked in their role between 1 and 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, along 10 different categories. If you get 10 points, you're the first, you're the best in the group. If you get first in every single category, you get 100 points, and that puts you right at the top of the table. Supports, unfortunately, don't tend to rank that highly in most of the metrics we used. Although they were included in the pool, they're probably not going to get anywhere near the top. And I can promise you, they're not in my top five. So let's have a look at how things rounded out at the end of the first half of the EU LCS. In fifth place, the terror in the top lane, it's Alfari from Misfits. High KDA, high damage a minute, but low CSD at the 15 minute mark means he only rounds out at about 79 points. It's pretty high though, when you think about it across the board. Now, in fourth place, another Misfits member, it's Hans Samo, touted to be the best AD carry in the league around week three. He's fallen off a little bit. None of his stats stand out as particularly too bad, but he's sitting at the second or third point for most of his stats, which means he doesn't quite top it into our top three. Our top three, well, in third place, it's the mid lane Italian stallion. Jazuke has had a wonder of a split. One of our best performing rookies, probably our best performing rookie if you look at it. He's topping the table in KDA. His CSC at 15 is absolutely devastating. His damage minute is lacking a little bit. I'm sure Caps can try and teach him a few tricks to get nearer the top of the table. And for a first in an MVP ranking, we actually have a tie for first place. Leading it off, it's Pride from Schalke 0. Oh, it's actually Wonder. 
Wonder is first from Schalke 04. The other guy might surprise you. Uh, 87 points, high in KDA, high in damage minute, high in kill participation as well. Wonder is first in all of the categories for top laners. So he's a very strong choice for one of our statistical MVPs. On the other side of things, as I said, it might surprise you. It's actually Pride from Schalke 04, 87 points as well. First in all of the categories we challenged for. So it's very difficult to say that he's not making an incredible contribution to his team. Statistically, these are the best players in the league. Deficio, you might just be wrong. <laughs> Might. Well, well medic, medic was medic was also wrong because he can't. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what do you think? Uh, I don't think you can base it just on stats. Not That's to true. ruin everything for yeah. medic, uh, but I mean, fun list. Very surprising. Very surprising. But immediately when Wonder came up, we all went like, oh yeah, of course. Actually, he is crushing. Yeah, his it. numbers are crazy. I thought mm. Perks was going to be on there. Yeah, Perks is, is not even in the top five or. Like, what were the metrics? Uh, what were the metrics? Whatever medic like. We definitely had like KDA that. in there, which yeah, I mean, is obviously. We only saw three <laughs> metrics because, like, isn't he isn't he dominating CS per uh, CS at uh, 15? difference at 15? He's number one for like minutes yeah. and almost everything. Yeah, so yeah, damage per minute, CS at 15. He's definitely really good in those. So and definitely Maybe today KDA as well. Suck. Maybe his KDA is really uh, really. No, 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 his KDA is fine. Like ah, uh, whatever. Like medic is just choosing his. <laughs> his like, this guy is like, 90 points. No, I want wonder. <laughs> Beards no, per well, face. Caps not on the list, man. Caps was on. We were, we were definitely caps, definitely perks. Uh, not enough time. In no, but with no, the ca ca really. no caps can be like, like no offense, but you have your moments where you're like just you know you do whatever, and then your KDA just goes. Oh yeah, your KDA probably sucks. <laughs> I mean, how bad is my KDA? I mean, it must it's be like four. Better. It's like four. four you're you're not a KDA player. You're not a KDA player. You gotta be but a KDA player. Who, who's the biggest KDA player uh, in the league? I mean, you just saw that, you know. <laughs> One on GB every game. <laughs> One I think Pride. That's Pride's a little bit. That's why there are no Fnatic players. Yeah. Okay, no KDA we don't, players. We don't play for KDA. I mean, oh, there you go. You can make an argument for Mini Tupac. Like he's a bit of a KDA player too. I like mean, not today when he decided I mean, he, to die five he, times. Yeah, today he made an exception. <laughs> yeah, today he made an exception. Uh, in any case, moral of the story is that indeed it should be kind of a combination of statistical insight and opinion. That is why usually there's also stats people involved in, in when the MVP is decided. So and medic. you get your wish. <laughs> and, <laughs> medic. and then the official counts for 90% of the vote. No, that's not true. Don't quote me on that. I like my list. Yeah, I, I, we like your list as well. There that's we great. go. Well, Good I stuff. Mean, no, I Most think people seem to agree, uh, actually, uh, on most of them. Nobody's attacking you, dude. <laughs> I feel okay. like some hostile <laughs> movements over here. Nice. All right, well, anyway, uh, a lot of interesting plays today, a lot of interesting players, and a lot of good games, and we have more tomorrow. Let's see what we've got coming up. We're going to start off with Giants versus the Unicorns of Love. Uh, both teams have been in a bind, and both really need to get a win on the board. We'll see if Shook can go up against Gilius oh, and yeah. net HGK that natural. second it's win. Can't. No? Impossible? Gilius is too smart for a solo key player. Or he's, <laughs> <laughs> or he's now a bit tilted, and he's going to go into that matchup thinking we're going to crush him. You know what I learned today? What did you learn? You got to ban Zach. Hmm. Oh Every yeah, true. The jungler that played Zach today looked fantastic. Yeah. So is Zach just That's why we picked it. PR? There we go. Smart players from Fnatic. I think he's it's good, man. It's pretty idiot proof. <laughs> like no offense, but this champion it, you it's really hard to mess up and engage because even if you miss E, you Q and then you flash auto attack to someone else and then you bind them together and then you are. Or if you regret it, you just click old instantly yeah, and, you and then run out. 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 And so that, you, can, you can cancel the old, you know. There you go. It's actually really smart. So that's what we'll keep an eye on tomorrow. Whoever picks Zach, if he F's up, then uh -huh. it's absolutely horrible. Shook looked great on the we'll Zach see. today. He did. Yeah, he uh, did. Quick prediction round Misfits versus G2, guys. Who wins it? Oh, I predicted G2. Yeah, after today, it's actually quite uh, uh, Fun simple. fact, yes. based on the EU4 podcast prediction game, which always happens towards the end after we do our quick and fire predictions. And it's on predictions. SoundCloud, on YouTube, it's on SoundCloud, on iTunes, iTunes, and YouTube. Go check it out. Uh, I said G2, Afari said Misfits. If G2 wins, Afari needs to tweet my Yorick backdoor play. You probably saw that already a few times. Insane backdoor <laughs> I made on Medic Stream. Great play. And call me the I've greatest top lane in the world. Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, if Misfits win, I have to call him Captain Alfari for all of week six. So there's a lot on the line. There is More a lot of like, career changing stuff there. Uh, so anyone think Misfits is going to be able to beat G2 or at least put up a fight? I mean, 
I mean, everything can happen in a best of one, but I definitely <laughs> think G2 is favored. Yeah, they look very strong. I think strong G2 is better too. They look very strong after today. And over in North America, the NALCS Academy is just about to start up with Optic Gaming Academy versus Golden Guardians Academy. Oh, if you didn't catch all of the games from the EU LCS today, you can check them out in our rebroadcast of following NALCS Academy. So that was that. It is time for us to log off for the night. It was wonderful, PGL. Thank you to my guests for joining me. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for more EU LCS. Until then, have a great night. Now Odo's gonna get opened up on there's a spray and play, but Odo's gonna try and turn it back around. Hexing Odo made him comes down and steal backs down! Odo looking for the 2v1 outplay. Can he jump onto Ruin as well? The cannon barrage, the jump, the Odo get dunked! But Splice are finally awake in the early game as they take down Giants in a dominant performance. They can look to force fights. Flash in straight onto a trap though. Here comes the double shockwave, the knockoff! What a play from H2K! On to Profit, trying to catch him out. There's the shot going double knockout. Profit somehow still alive with the lock of the eyes alive. But the next bounce brings them all back into the team. Sappy, Clint, they're gonna get on towards Rocket now. H2K took them till week five. But finally, they come alive. They clean up the ace and they take down the Nexus. Misfits and Unicorns of Love going head to head. But Misfits, are they gonna turn it back? They're waiting. Pull the Galio to the middle of the team. Give us the two man. What oh, are the oh, oh, baby? Misfits with their eyes on the Nexus. They're looking for the win here to bring it back. It was the 0-2 week last week, but this time they're starting off with a win. Okay, guys, I have with one map for exactly one minute now. This will be now. He's going to look for it immediately with the rocket jump in. Yanko's going to body block the ultimate coming on the backside. Suzuki, no hesitation from Yarnin. Follows back to look for the kill. He's going to get one, not going to get two, and Perks taking it away, but he will find the double in the end. Now they just need to kill that Nexus, maybe get some kills. Can they get the kill back? Will Yanko's fall? Can they stop them from getting the game? It does not look like it. 11-0 closeout for G2. Absolute dominance. Looking good as well. Now there's a charge in the meantime. He's going to take his free objective. But Fnatic are grouping in the mid. And Caps is actually killed. Upset. What happened? Now on the retreat, the follow-up is all too easy for Fnatic. There's no AD carry there. They're not scared. They're going to double. And he continued to look for damage. TP now coming in from Vizichachi. Upset is alive, but Nuketuck is going to give it up his life. Doesn't matter. Fnatic just playing with their food at this point. They have three 80 carries in the base. They're going to move in. They're going to take down the Nexus. They're going to take down Shaq. Oh, oh my god. Uh, Holy shit, we did it.